Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Today I got a fun and exciting video for you guys on the eve of July 4th, and that's because PCSX2 has undergone another massive update, bringing in a ton of new features, a ton of visual improvements, and just more fun PlayStation 2 emulation. So we're going to be going over some of the items that were in 2.20 and now 2.40 as of the recording of this video, because PlayStation 2 emulation via PCSX is some of the best emulation out there, and anytime it gets improvements, I want to talk about them with you. Before we get to find Involved, though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, I got a Patreon link down below as well. And sorry I didn't get to this one yesterday, that was the plan, but I was on a plane heading back from Vermont to Chicago. I'm back in the studio and we're back at making videos. So if we take a look here, on July 1st, there was a blog about PCSX 2.2.0 as well as 2.4.0. So if you haven't updated your PCSX installation in maybe like three to six months, there's definitely going to be a lot of fun stuff coming down. So we're going to be going over both of it just to kind of catch you up. But honestly, you would think that PlayStation 2 emulation is buttoned up, done and dusted, and basically perfect. But there are still a lot of games that could use some improvements. So there's definitely a lot of peripherals that are going to come in as we're going to be talking about today. Because one of the most fun things is there is a whole new list of peripherals that are going to be working with PCSX2. The most exciting, well, at least in my opinion, is the Trans Vibrator from Res. And if you don't know what that is, you can definitely look it up online. Just be careful what video you click on because people definitely use it for some very specific means that I can't show you on YouTube if you can kind of read between the lines there but i love the dedication that the pcsx2 team shows to bring all of these different peripherals in there's definitely a lot of meteor updates on this pcsx2 build but i kind of like this one the best just because it shows how much the team just wants to make absolutely everything work for playstation 2 emulation and if somehow you've never played res before take it from me it is one of the best and prettiest games ever made it is a piece of moving art that just happens to have an interactive video game wrapped around it and it is one of my favorite games of all time, whether it's on Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, or the recent VR version of the game. And it's got one of the best soundtracks ever set to gaming as well. So we're doing an early soundtrack sample of the audio quality. 45 seconds, I'll be right back with a ton more improvements in emulation. Three, one. I mean, honestly, that's just some of the best music I've ever heard in a video game. And you'll see here the JogCon. This is from Namco, and it has a big jog wheel in the middle that you could use to steer in games like Ridge Racer. So having all these peripherals in PCSX2 now is just absolutely outstanding. Now, on the graphical and performance side of things, the things that basically everyone cares about, per pixel alpha blending has seen improvements and re-implementations as well. So you're going to get a prettier look to some games, and you're also going to get a higher performance. I'm not going to go through all of the charts here. There is a link to this blog in the description below but you're going to see the average of one percentile fps as well as the 0.2 percentile is going to be much improved and that's definitely going to be great for everyone especially those of you using potato pcs now one that doesn't really make sense unless i explain it but will be important in the future is symbol parsing overhaul some games have debug symbols contained within them and those can be useful for decompilation projects we just saw mario kart decompiled on gamecube and that is because hudson soft left all of the different debug symbols within the game build in and of itself so this is nothing you're ever going to use in your emulation day to day with PCSX2, but developers and teams out there that are looking to decompile PlayStation 2 games are going to be able to use this to basically aid in that effort. And Pac-Man World 2 is one of the games that has full debug symbols in it as well. And I'm not going to get too deep into what a debug symbol is, just know that if you are trying to decompile something, they are incredibly useful. It's kind of like a legend or a map as to what everything is going on under the hood, all of the different jumps in memory, all of different different calls to the hardware. It is just one of those things that's quite useful for devs. And we're going into our second soundtrack sample because damn it, Pac-Man deserves it. I'll be right back. Oh, <laughs> 
mean, honestly, I just love the music in Pac-Man. It's super charming, and a 3D platformer in Pac-Man's universe always did work for me. Now, moving over the 2.4.0 feature set again, I will leave a link in the description below so you can read all of this in depth. And just be aware that this is the most recent stable build. If you go to Unstable Nightlies, which I do recommend for most people because honestly, it's never broken anything for me, you're at basically 2.5, so you'll see even more coming in. And you're going to see here there is a lot of different improvements including render targeting something like hitman right here if you do the little scroll left and right on the pcsx2 website you're going to see just what the issues were in the overall rendering now you're going to see all of those things basically completely cleaned up because that is the reality of playstation 2 emulation and pcsx2 in and of itself it is not a final product and that is not a knock on the emulator it is spectacular it's just one of those things maybe you played a dozen games that are absolutely perfect with no visual glitches or bugs and you think to yourself that's how every single game in the PlayStation 2 library will run. That just isn't the case. So you have developers going in there, fixing rendering items, going in under the hood for PCSX2, and rewriting basically entire portions of the code to get better performance and better actual visuals out of the emulation. So something like Hitman had issues before, and you can tell right here in the actual emulation and video quality, I don't see anything wrong with this image whatsoever. But again, I always say, you've got thousands of eyes. I only have two, so if there's anything you see that you don't like the look of, leave me a comment down below because inevitably someone's going to notice something that I didn't as I capture this and edited it. But this is going to be one of the big changes on 2.4 and definitely one that if you've seen glitches in some games, these improvements should clean up most of them. Now, it's not going to be 100% of every single thing fixed, but it's going to be a vast improvement from where we came from. And I can't wait to see what the PCS X2 team brings to the table in the next big fundamental update. But let's keep on the visual improvements and move over to Ace Combat here because you're going to see they talk about upscaling fixes and how there was a little bit of a misalignment issue caused by that upscaling because again, don't forget, one of the biggest features in PCS X2 is being able to upscale that internal rendering resolution uh, of the game to see captured in this video. We're done at 4K internal, so you could have situations where there were issues. Games mentioned include Ace Combat 4, the Sly Cooper trilogy, God of War, as well as Shadow of the Colossus, one of the best games on PlayStation 2. So as you move this slider here back and forth, you're going to see the difference in the overall upscaling quality and if we move over to the actual gameplay footage you're going to see that improvement as well uh, this i think is one of the most fundamental improvements of this entire build because when that upscaling was having those misalignment issues the image just didn't look correct and even though it didn't prevent you from having fun with an incredible game it's one of those things anytime you see or hear something that shouldn't be there either visually or audio wise your brain is going to be taken out of the actual gameplay and you're going to start thinking about why was that wrong our eyes and our ears are very sensitive to things that should not be there or glitches so when we see them it basically just stops our brain processing the fun and we start thinking about the visual issues and we're going to do the next soundtrack sample as well because awesome music and now that we have all of the scaling fixes the game just feels perfect to me but go ahead and listen i'll be right back with more fixes Sounds perfect, plays perfect, and now it looks perfect when you're upscaling as well. Now moving over to new features, you're going to see there's a custom real-time clock. That's because the PlayStation 2 had an internal battery that would track the time and date, and a lot of games would have special features depending on what time you'd turn the console on. Simpson Hit and Run had a Halloween theme going on for the title menu at that date. So now you can basically just go in and articulate whatever date you want the game to run at. And honestly, it is a small thing, but it gives you 100% of the real hardware experience because if you can't articulate that real-time clock to your needs to be able to see what you want you basically have to just hope that you're playing the game on Halloween to get some of the features and I know I just did a soundtrack sample we're going to do one more because anytime I hear the Simpsons hit and run music I'm absolutely happy with it it is the best Simpsons game of all time and damn it I really want to have a sequel to this game one day maybe in VR but 30 seconds and I'll be right back I wanted a peanut bad people say I'm slow wait a minute that was an insult
I mean, honestly, the music in Simpsons Hit Run is so fun, and just like I said earlier about Res, if there's some way you haven't played this game before, and I would be hard-pressed to believe that, you have to check it out. It is just so much fun, not just for Simpsons fans, but fans of video games in general. And now here on PCSX2 with a real-time clock, every single feature, function, and otherwise bit of fun you can have with the game is going to be in the emulator, and you're going to be good to go. Now, interestingly, Direct3D 11 came back, because we were dealing with Direct3D 12, as well as Vulkan rendering. And while Vulkan usually is the renderer that I choose for basically all of my PlayStation 2 emulation needs. As far as PCSX2 is concerned, having another renderer back is going to be an awesome thing, and in some games it definitely seems to run faster. You'll see here on Res, I'll switch from Direct3D 12 to Direct3D 11, or Vulkan to Direct3D 11, and now we're running the game with a different renderer, and honestly, I don't really think that there was a huge difference, but it's going to be game-to-game -game dependent, and it is nice that the team is giving you as many options as possible, when it comes to hardware accelerated rendering. Now your mileage may vary depending on what GPU you have. Like I said, I'm running these at 4K internal rendering resolution, but I also have a 3080 Ti to put up against the job. So honestly, even though that isn't the most new card at this point in time, it definitely has a lot of grunt behind it. And Mac fans are going to be super happy to hear that now all of the binaries have been signed, so your operating system is not going to continually yell at you about installing something that hasn't been signed. And honestly, I get why Apple does this, but I think their hand-holding on their operating system is drastically too much. There should just be a toggle that you press on the overall computer that says, let me do whatever the hell I want, even including breaking the operating system. Just let me have that freedom. But of course, it's Apple. They want that controlled user experience, and it can definitely trip some people up, so that's fixed now. But that's the roster of changes, at least the ones important enough for me to want to talk about on the new version of PCSX. And again, remember, the Unstable Nightlies is a good branch to be on. I've never once seen it break anything as far as games are concerned and that does give you the most recent updates but if you just want that stability update jump up to 2.4 you're going to get a ton of improvements a ton of new peripherals and just a ton more playstation 2 fun at the end that's what this is all about making sure you can have as much fun with playstation 2 games as you want and that's always a good thing have a happy july 4th tomorrow if you're in the u.s and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye